In March of 2024, Google introduced a new Core Web Vitals metric called Interaction to Next Paint, or INP. In this video, let me talk through what INP is and how we can measure INP on our websites. To begin, what exactly does INP measure? INP measures how quickly the website is able to respond when a visitor interacts with that website. Currently, INP only observes click, tap, or key press interactions. So if a visitor clicks on something with their mouse, taps on something on their screen, or they interact with something on a virtual or physical keyboard, the time it takes for the browser to process that interaction will be measured, and that is what contributes to INP. INP measures all interactions on the page, but only the page's longest interaction time is recorded as the page's INP time. Here's an example from web.dev of how somebody is interacting with a page. On the left, you can see a website with poor responsiveness. This is a website that would have a higher INP time. You can see that somebody is trying to click and expand an accordion, but it takes a long time between when this person clicks and when the content appears, when that accordion actually expands. On the right side of the screen, we have a website with good responsiveness. Good responsiveness means that INP time is going to be quite low. And you can see in this example that when somebody clicks, the accordion expands right away. We see content appear right away. In this video, I've been saying the word interaction a lot, but let me take a step back and define what an interaction is. And by doing so, we'll start to better understand what INP is actually measuring. So when a visitor goes to interact with the page, that interaction has to be processed on the browser's main thread. The browser's main thread is just a part of the browser where the browser does all the work. So the browser's main thread is where JavaScript is processed, that's where images are loaded, that's where CSS files are loaded, that's where videos are played. Anything that people do on a website, that's processed on the browser's main thread. So when a visitor interacts, that interaction is sent to the main thread and the browser has to do some kind of work related to that interaction. The problem is that there are a lot of tasks happening on the browser's main thread. You can think of the main thread as a queue. And if the queue is really full, then it's going to take a while for the browser to be able to get to the visitor's interaction. The visitor will have to wait for the browser to clear the main thread so that it can start to process something related to that interaction. We call the time between when the visitor interacts and when the code related to that interaction starts executing on the main thread, the input delay. The input delay is how long the visitor has to wait for the main thread to be clear enough for the browser to do something related to that interaction. Now, once the browser begins executing the code related to that interaction, a new task is created on the main thread. And that task is where the browser is going to process any JavaScript code related to that particular interaction. So in the case of that accordion example, the JavaScript code might be calling in additional content from the page. It might be updating the CSS to show that expansion of the accordion to add that new content to the page. And there's probably lots of other things happening with that task as well, like tracking scripts being called. Now at some point during that task, paint operations will begin. Paint operations is where the browser begins displaying something back to the page. The time between when the code started executing and when the browser began paint operations related to this code is known as the processing time. The processing time measures how long it took the browser to execute all the code related to this interaction. Now, once paint operations begin, doesn't mean that something appears right away. It takes a while for those paint operations to process as well, sometimes quite a while. So the delay between the paint operations beginning and the actual output being presented to the visitor is referred to as the presentation delay. The presentation delay is that last part where the visitor has to wait for something to appear on the page. Putting that all together, we can see the entirety of the interaction. When a visitor interacts, we first have to wait for the browser's main thread to clear. That way the browser actually is able to start processing something related to that interaction. The time spent waiting is known as the input delay. Once the browser begins executing the code related to that interaction, we then have to wait until paint operations can begin. That's called the processing time. And then once the paint operations begin, we have to wait for something to actually appear on the screen since paint operations aren't instantaneous. And that's known as the presentation delay. How you fix IMP will change depending on which of these three stages of the interaction are slow. If your input delay is slow, then you have to work to improve all those other tasks that are running on the main thread so that those run faster and your queue on the browser can be cleared up faster. 
if your processing time is long, you have to optimize your JavaScript code and any other code that's running as part of that task to make sure that it runs more quickly. And if there's a delay with the presentation, then you have to make sure that you're painting things as quickly as possible. That might require reworking things like really advanced animations that make paint operations take longer. All right, the last thing I wanna talk through is how do we measure INP on a website? INP times need to be under 200 milliseconds to be considered good. Anything between 200 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds is in a middle category called needs improvement. And anything over 500 milliseconds will be considered poor by Google. And an INP over 500 milliseconds also means that users are probably having a poor experience on the website. As with all Core of Vitals metrics, you want to make sure that 75% of your visitors experience a good INP. One way we can measure interaction to NextPaint is on PageSpeed Insights. Type in the URL that you want to test, then click Analyze. This will load a report telling you lots of different numbers, including your website's INP. INP is only available in field data. Field data is the data that is observed from real world visitors interacting with your website over the last 28 days. If your website doesn't have very much traffic or if your pages are not indexable, then you will not have data in PageSpeed Insights. Another way that we can measure INP is with Debug Bear's INP Debugger. Enter in your website's URL and Debug Bear will go through and interact with every element on this page. It will then give you a report of all the different interaction times that their tool experienced. You want to focus on any that have a really long interaction time and see what you can do to make those faster. If you'd like more information about Interactions Next Paint or any other metrics involved in measuring your website's performance, I hope you check out my new book, Speed Metrics Guide. Published by A Press in 2024, Speed Metrics Guide provides a reference for some of the most important metrics that you should use to evaluate your website's speed. This book is written for everybody involved in website speed, including marketers, SEOs, executives, designers, as well as developers and engineers. I hope you'll check it out. You can learn more about it or purchase your copy at speedmetricsguide.com. If you have any questions or want help measuring and improving INP on your website, please contact me at matthew at elementive.com.